Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog PharmaSamboon.com and today I'm joining along with Dawn from The Minimal Mom and so many other YouTube moms, families who are going to be doing some spring cleaning inspiration, motivation. I know that I have a lot of it to do, especially this time of year. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite essential oil homemade cleaning recipes, my thoughts on clutter and how I try to keep it at a minimum, and some of my favorite cleaning tips and tricks and products along the way. So let's get started. The first place I'm going to go is some of my windows. This is something that I neglect a lot especially areas like the mudroom where we almost just expect it to be messy at all times. So a lot of times I ignore it as something that needs to be clean, but it really is nice when I look from the kitchen into the mudroom and I can see clear glass. Now it doesn't last long, but it is nice while it lasts. Now a few of my favorite cleaning products for glass, I have a couple. One of them is concentrates. So one that I've used a lot is the Grove Cleaning Concentrate. This one is lavender and thyme. I like it because it coordinates with the jar so you don't mix it up. Because I know whenever I make homemade ones, obviously you can label them, but sometimes on the fly, I don't and I think, oh, I'll just remember this. I'll remember what was in this jar. And guess what? I never ever do. So even if you want to do exclusively homemade, getting something like this where there is color coordinated is really nice or just keeping a label and always using the same ones. Maybe you're more organized than me and this isn't a problem that you have. But with this, you essentially just dump this in and fill it the rest of the way with water. And then this is the glass cleaner. Another that I like to do is making my own homemade. So I have a recipe on my website for free. It's my cleaning with essential oils recipe book. You can get that at bit.ly slash farmhouse essential oil ebook. For my homemade glass recipe, I use a half a cup of water, one and a half cups of vinegar, five drops of lemon, and five drops of orange. Lemon, you are going to find, is my cleaning magic weapon in our farmhouse. So it works for so many things. Anytime something is truly stuck on and you cannot get it off with anything else, like a white sink, for example, lemon is the natural product that's actually going to get that off. So I will show you that in a bit, the before and after whenever I tackle my sink and my stove. We have lots of white here in our house. For glass, I really like to use microfiber cloths. I buy a lot of these because over time, they do get a little bit hard. I don't know if you use microfiber, you know what I'm talking about. Whenever they're nice and soft, they provide a streak-free clean. Sometimes I like to do one pass that's really wet, so with like a lot of spray, and then another one while it's more dry, and that takes off all of the smudges. All right, next I'm going to tackle this wood stove area. This is probably the last, or we probably already did the last fire that's going to be in here for the season. It really ended quickly. Spring just came on suddenly. So I'm going to use my vacuum. So the vacuum that I have is a Shark Professional. Now what I like about this is you can remove it in several spots. So you can do a little handheld part. You can pull out a longer area, which I will demonstrate here. I actually bought this vacuum on the recommendation of two of my sisters. So that is why I own it. We had a really junky vacuum for a really long time and this just makes vacuuming a lot easier. Another tip that I like to do while cleaning is I always wear an apron. This allows me to pick up any random trash that's too big for the vacuum or just things that are out of place. That's why I like wearing an apron all day. Usually by the end of the day, I have batteries, pins, Legos, I just collect things that are out of place and then whenever I get to the place where they're supposed to go, I just pull them out of my apron and put them away. All right, now I'm going to make up a little paste that will go on the sink and also it's a great way to disinfect cutting boards. The key ingredient is this lemon essential oil. A lot of times whenever I'm just trying to clean up really quickly and I don't have any of this mixed up, 
I will just drop the lemon essential oil straight onto the sink, kind of spread it around with my hand, allow it to sit there a while, and then come scrub it away about five to 10 minutes later. This paste does allow you to work it in with a bit more grit that the salt provides. It also does allow it to sit a bit better versus the lemon does have the tendency to mix with any water that's in the sink and then drain down. And so it can get lost that way. But I do use this quite often in that way. I also will sprinkle lemon essential oil onto my cutting boards, just neat, which just means directly on it, and then sort of spread it around with a tea towel or just a dish rag and allow it to soak in. But this paste will help me to disinfect my wooden cutting boards a bit better. So I added a quarter of a cup of salt and about a quarter of a cup of baking soda. And then I'm just going to add a couple tablespoons of water and about 10 to 20 drops of the lemon essential oil. Another area that needs constant attention in my house, but it doesn't always get constant attention, are the walls and windows, especially here by our kitchen table where the kids sit here on this bench. The windows and walls get gross on a regular basis. Now, I do wipe them down between meals whenever I'm wiping down the table, but every once in a while, it's nice to come in with a nice all-purpose Cleaner. Now, I have a few things I like. I do like the Grove Concentrate and use that in my home. I also do have a DIY recipe that I like a lot. For this, you can combine in a glass jar, a half a cup of vinegar, one and a half cups of warm water, 15 drops of tea tree oil, and 15 drops of lemon. This, just like with the sink, lemon just cuts through anything greasy, grimy, even if you have a sticker stuck on something, like my kids have some stickers on their floor. And the best solution for that is to put some lemon essential oil on it, let it sit for about five to 10 minutes, and then it'll wipe away. I've seen so many miraculous stories with lemon, like getting Sharpie and marker and just different little disasters off of things. Another place where the walls get especially destroyed is going up the staircase. This is just, I imagine just kids walking up with both arms out as they go up. All right, I wanna take a moment to talk a bit about clutter because that is one of the ways that I'm able to at least sort of stay on top of keeping this place clean 
with six kids, I do find that anytime the clutter gets out of control, everything just becomes a little harder, a little bit more stressful, and it really isn't necessary. Now, if you need a lot of encouragement and tips on keeping clutter at bay in your home, Dawn from The Minimal Mom is a great person to follow. She has so many great tips and she also really keeps everything in perspective. So there are things that are difficult to get rid of, especially for some people more than others. So it probably depends on your personality type, how difficult it is for you to get rid of things. I have a pretty easy time with it. I will get rid of things just as quickly as they come in. If I notice that nobody's playing with them, if I notice that it's something that just didn't quite meet my expectations, I have no trouble getting it right back out of the house and it not being something that I constantly have to manage because anytime you have an extra item that's extra inventory in your house. It's an extra thing you have to keep clean. It's an extra thing you have to find yourself putting away all the time, especially if you're a parent of little kids, and it's just not worth it. One of my best tips for getting rid of things that you are afraid to get rid of because maybe it was expensive and although you're facing the fact that it really didn't serve you like you thought it would or the kids didn't play with it like you thought they would, you don't wanna get rid of it even though it's clear that it's not something you really need in your home because of the cost or just the expectation that you originally had of it. I took this from Marie Kondo years ago. I know everybody talks about Marie Kondo, but one thing that I took from her because a lot of the things in her book didn't relate, this one really did, is thinking about how an item already served its purpose. So maybe the purpose of an item was just that it brought joy in the moment when you received it. So if it was a gift that you got your kids for Christmas, there was that joy on Christmas morning. They were happy, they were excited, they played with it. And then later on you realize maybe it wasn't quite exactly what they needed. Well, it already did serve the purpose that it was intended for, which was bringing that joy and excitement on Christmas morning. So you can let it go knowing that. Now, I am not a minimalist in my decor. I do like to collect things. I have hutches full of china. I have things hanging on the wall. I do like the look of a cozy lived-in home, and there's even things that I'm still pursuing to buy to fill up my walls in my home. But I find that the way that clutter affects the cleanliness of my home is when it's something that is removable, that people can put in the wrong spot, that can be left at the bottom of the stairs or drug out of kids' rooms. Those are the things that I really have to keep as minimal as possible so that if I wanna do a quick cleanup with my vacuum and my homemade all-purpose cleaner, I don't have to first get the surfaces to a point where they can even be cleaned. Now in the kitchen, of course, that's always the case because there's pots and pans and cooking, but around the rest of the house, that isn't as much an issue, especially in the main living areas. Now I will say that in the kids' rooms, that is where we struggle the most with clutter because they like to keep things like cardboard and tape, and it might not even be something that you necessarily bought or ordered, but it just makes its way in there. And so it's a thing that I probably do at least once a month. I go in and get a trash bag full of stuff. And without that mom cleanup or mom attention as we call it, nobody even knows what to do to clean it up. So I go in, try to keep the kids away. I tell them if you notice anything is missing, then we'll talk about it. But they never do. They never notice that anything is missing and then they can go in and they can clean the manageable mess. But whenever it gets to the point where there's so much stuff, they don't even know how to clean it. And so I have to bring it back to a certain level and then they can stay on top of it. Dawn has a really cool tip called the quarantine bin. And I actually utilized this before I even ever heard her talk about it or before I heard it being called the quarantine bin. But this is where you take things that you're not really sure if you can get rid of. So. In, in the case of my child, this was, she, she collects stuffed unicorns. And they're really annoying because they're hard to clean around because they're huge. And one time I thought maybe I could get rid of a few of them without her noticing. And so I put them in a certain bin where she, nobody gets into. It was a wicker trunk on the top of my armor so nobody ever touches it. And I just waited and sure enough, she noticed. And so I brought them back out of the quarantine bin because it isn't my intention to get rid of things that they actually love and enjoy. That's not my goal. But you know the things 
that nobody uses, nobody cares about, nobody's gonna notice, but you can utilize that quarantine bin if you're worried that they might. I will say that in my years of decluttering, so I've been pretty into this for about five or six years now, where I just keep a very low inventory. I make decluttering a constant thing that we do, regular trips to thrift shops, donating things. It is just always on the to-do list. It's something that happens weekly. Ever since then, there have been a few things I regretted getting rid of, a few. And even those I can't remember at this exact moment. I just know that at some point I thought, oh, well, I guess I could have used that. So it wasn't something devastating because it's still not even in my brain, but I know that I had that a few times, but the benefits that have happened from it are so far beyond that, that it is worth it to me to make that a regular part of your job, to look at things and think, how is this serving me? Is this beautiful? Is it useful? Does it really deserve my attention, my time, dusting it, putting it back away, recategorizing, reorganizing, or is it something that my life would be better if it just wasn't in it? Now in the kitchen, my favorite tool to use for the floors is our robotic vacuum. I don't like using this everywhere. It has to have its boundaries. Unless you have one that has the GPS or where it actually can map out where it's supposed to go, I find that it just goes in places that it shouldn't be. But if you can create a boundary for it, it does really well. So the place that we use our robot vacuum, pretty much the only place we use it now is in the kitchen, but we do use it daily. We have French doors and a baby gate at the front of our kitchen. So it's very set apart from the rest of the house. And this gives the robotic vacuum a nice, concise area to work on. And pretty much every area of the kitchen floor needs to be cleaned at all times. So I just run it after meals or just any time when there's not kids in here. Now when there's kids in here, they mess with it, they turn it off it doesn't really work great. But whenever no kids are in this kitchen, I'm almost always running the robotic vacuum to just catch all the little things. And it does save me time from having to get out the big vacuum, which we do about once a week. We come in here with the big vacuum, vacuum everything up. But for daily maintenance, it's the robotic vacuum. All right, this is what I use for wood floors. This is just a Bissell steam cleaner. It has the removable things at the bottom so that you can wash it. We have wood floors all throughout our whole house and we just keep it really simple, a little bit of water. And sometimes if it's very dirty, maybe a little bit of vinegar, but for the most part, mostly water and the steam cleaner. We run over our wood floors once every other week with this. Now I'm not cleaning in any of my bathrooms today, I'm going to, but my time has expired as I hear Daniel awake from his nap. So let me share with you my bathroom scrub recipe. Now again, the all purpose is just fine, but if you need something a little bit more abrasive or a scrub that you want to soak in, this is my recipe. So I use three quarter cup baking soda, a quarter cup cast aisle soap, a tablespoon of water and 10 drops of lemon essential oil. Now make sure to go check out all of the other spring cleaning videos for spring cleaning motivation and tips from other creators here on YouTube as part of Dawn from The Minimal Moms Spring Cleaning Collab. I will leave a link to the playlist down below. Also make sure to grab my free essential oil cleaning book with all of my recipes. You can print it out and access it regularly. You can get that at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse essential oil ebook. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.